There was a time in my life where on a, on a career level, I was having a very successful career and uh, I, was, I, I was living the, the dream, I thought, but I didn't feel content. And I was just, I was wondering how could this journey that I've dreamt of, and that's finally I was doing the job, you know, I was at the top of my game as a professional dancer, doing Dancing with the Stars, um, called Strictly Come Dancing in the UK. I was seemingly having it all, right? And then in here, I was seeking feeling contentment and I was like Camilla you're being ungrateful how can you not be feeling content when you have everything you've ever dreamt of right but it felt outside of myself Hello, thank you for joining today's episode about the process of reframing and the power of words and thought patterns. My name is Christy, your host today, um, owner of Illum Evolve, and today I'm going to be interviewing Camila Sacredalra. Um, she will be leading us through um, a process in reprogramming thoughts. Um, reframing and the power of our mind, the power of, of our actions. Um, so I just had a thought I wanted to kind of lead us in immediate, just right away. Um, I was reflecting back over journal from 2022, um, some time when I was in Mexico. And one of the words that came up was rebirth, um, rebirthing experiences. Um, and the meditation at that time I was looking at was how I am holding space um, for myself, including uh, reframing um, experiences that had happened, becoming aware um, of these experiences in my life. Uh, and I think at that time, I honestly was coming out of a really tough relationship. Um, and what I had found is I was just really fixated and re uh, repeating patterns in my life um, based on old stories, old programming. Um, and it was really hard for me to, I'm going to say, unlock, to open up, to find space uh, when I was continuing to recycle similar thought patterns. So one of the things I did is I took time for myself, went away, uh, inside of a space where I could do some deeper reflection. And one of the processes that I believe is important for all of us as we are beginning the inward journey is to make time, take time to come back into connection with ourself. What are you thinking? What are you fixated on? Um, are your thoughts you know, being recycled every day? Are you having new thoughts, new processes that are supporting you in your growth forward? And the thought of that life is happening for us, not to us. Um, really changing subtle shifts, how it can create such a massive impact um, for us to reach beyond our current situation. And also that at any point in our life, we can change our story. We can create a new beginning for ourselves. One of the ways that Camila will share about her own journey, and I'm so honored that I even get to interview her, is how I actually met her through listening to the power of positive affirmation, making decisions from a place of high self worth, a personal empowerment, self love strengthening our voice and one of the ways that I was able to do that was through meditation and yoga so other things today and if anyone doesn't already have this practice one simple way you could just elevate your vibration is beginning of a practice of gratitude dropping into what is actually going well in my life finding something to be grateful for and I can tell you even at some of my rock bottom moments, uh, this has really supported me. Um, and this year, I actually found um, this 52 weeks of gratitude that uh, really in challenging, encouraging me. And every week, 
I write a letter of thanks, of gratitude, acknowledgement for what someone has done in my life. So today I'm inviting you to listen um, to this amazing interaction, conversation with Camila Sacred Dalarup as we get started here shortly. Hello, hello. So today's episode is about the process of reframing and the power of positive affirmations and the visualization process to achieve success and inner peace. Um, I have the privilege today of having Camila Sacred Dollar up here. Thank you so much for being here on this episode. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Wonderful. I know. I've been, this is almost like something that in a, a dream that I imagined. Um, but if you don't mind, I'd like to introduce you to those who may not know. Mm -hmm. um, Camila Sacred Dollar, she is um, a champion ballroom dancer a global best-selling author of three books and founder of Zenmi Meditation app. Uh, Camila is an accomplished life coach, uh, utilizing her skills as a Reiki master, hypnotherapist, and meditation teacher. And she works with a range of clients um, from CEO celebrities, business owners, executive TV producers. And I had the honor of uh, having you coach me a few times, which has been absolutely phenomenal experience. And I just want to, again, thank you for coming in to the space to share your wisdom and light um, on these topics today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here and to have this conversation with you. I love it. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. I, I always look forward to, you know, to explore these kind of conversations, because even though I know you've mentioned some of the questions you want to to ask and so forth, I always believe that we will share whatever is meant to be shared in this moment and together, you know what I mean? Because our conversations are always like that, right? There's never a coincidence yeah. when we start talking or anybody when in this sort of field of healing, right? Yeah, yeah, it actually has to be somewhat organic. Yes, for it absolutely. To be authentic. No, I love that. Well, I would love um just to kind of dive right in and just if you would like to share a little bit just to start us off with your own personal journey into this work um, of self acceptance, finding happiness and contentment um, from within. Mm -hmm. I felt emotional just then, as you said, the word contentment, because I, you don't know this part about me probably, but there was a time in my life, or maybe you do through my books, I may have mentioned this specifically, but there was a time in my life where on a, on a career level, I was having a very successful career and uh, I, was, I, I was living the, the dream, I thought, but I didn't feel content. And I was just I was wondering how could this journey that I've dreamed of and that's finally I was doing the job, you know, I was at the top of my game as a professional dancer doing Dancing with the Stars um, called Strictly Come Dancing in the UK. I was seemingly having it all right. And then in here, I was seeking feeling contentment and I was like, Camilla, you're being ungrateful. How can you not be feeling content when you have everything you've ever dreamt of? Right. Uh, yeah, but it felt outside of myself right mm -hmm. it felt like in the busyness and i'm going to say busyness of 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 seeking the wins and the and going from you know uh trophy to trophy um mm -hmm. career move to career move within that that i'd lost what i needed what my soul needed you wow. know what actually made me joyful and happy i had made my what was my hobby and my passion into a lifestyle and a career which was wonderful in so many ways and i will not I, I don't want to swap anything i'm so grateful for that now but something was calling me home and i like oh, wow. to say that i had ventured so far away from my inner home mm. that it was time to go on that journey and that was an inward journey what you know if you can share with, like what was that initial you know maybe sensing or just a click or you know something that's like there's an incongruency or there's something that doesn't feel right can you share any moment i'm sure there's plenty of it just a moment and i'm sure people listening too will recognize this because here's the thing we love when we learn through joy right and love and all the fun stuff we're like this is yeah. great <laughs> i'm guided we'll say i'm so guided at the minute 
But what I like to understand at the time was that I was being guided, but I was being guided by feeling empty, mm. lost, <laughs> stuck and uncomfortable wow. and literally thinking, what am I doing? Like, this isn't, I can't do this for the rest of my life. I've chosen, I thought this is all I ever wanted, but now I'm just like, where am I? Like, what am I doing? And that was a, quite a scary feeling. And I, I um, did what lots of my clients do and lots of people do in the moment. I ignored that. <laughs> and I thought, nope, uh, I'm just not gonna dive into that lost and stuck because that feels super uncomfortable. And as I know, we've spoken about before, you know, just in general, the unknown, that was oh, yeah. so scary. All I'd ever known since I was, you know, two and a half years old, I wanted to be a professional dancer. I wanted to be a champion. I wanted to, you know, travel the world. I'd done all of that. I mean, I had done what I set out to do and I thought that was for life. Yeah. And then I was just fall I'd fallen out of love and I was feeling all of these uncomfortable feelings. I was like, I was literally praying that I would fall back in love with my wow. career. Wow. I, that's so powerful. It's kind of like, um, you know, giving yourself permission, you know, to actually start over or, or to, to let go of something. Maybe that, uh, I love that phrase, you know, for myself, like something has come to an end, a, a new chapter needs to begin. Um, yes. and I love your book. Um, it, it's not you, just me. Um, I would highly recommend anyone who hasn't read it to get it, but I have to quote one uh, sentence in there. It says, but it's your life, your journey. And wouldn't it be a shame not to know what loving yourself fully feels and looks like, what it means to blossom fully into your awesome self as the most important emotional investment you'll ever make. And, and I don't know if you can segue that into what you just said, but like, yeah, when you find you're not in love with what your life looks like anymore. Like, That's right. And sometimes it's a career or sometimes it's a person and we find ourselves falling out of love. But when you read that part, I, I felt this, like there was going to be disappointment in order to blossom into who I actually was suddenly at 35. Wow. That was going to disappoint a lot of people who thought well camilla's identity is she's a dancer like how could that's yeah. that's who we know her is that like that's who she is my i i did not know my own identity outside of camilla the dancer mm -hmm. and i i so desperately just wanted to be like known as camilla like maybe just like a nice human you know <laughs> just like yeah. see me not just for what yeah. i do but just see me right so you know and i I think, you know, you've lived this amazing life and had, you know, many gifts that took you to your, this high state of, you know, success and performance. Um, and, you know, I think, how would you, what would you say to anyone who finds themselves, you know, out of alignment or mm -hmm. in a, it's become an unhealthy situation, but they're afraid of the unknown. Like what is a first step to take, you know, to say, uh, I, I, how do I begin a new journey or giving myself permission, you know, even if at the expense of saying, I don't want to hurt, I don't want to let other people down, but I'm letting myself down. How yeah. do people start again? It starts with acceptance, I guess, you know, literally accepting how we're feeling and knowing that these, these uncomfortable feelings that are here are guiding us. And then I guess permission to disappoint people, if that's what's going to happen, because otherwise I would be, you know, faking it. I will start to live a life that's not me and that's not my authentic self. And I, I believe I've read some research recently where we've been living understanding that the highest frequency has always been spoken about as love, but oh, new God. research apparently shows it now. I, I, I believe that it's actually authenticity. Oh my God, I love this. But authenticity takes so much because being our authentic self sometimes means loss. It means that people may not accept that version of us, even oh, people yeah. that we are really close to, you know? And sometimes I know lots of people who go through spiritual journeys will say that there has been loss, whether it's friendships with, you know, loved ones or families. And, and when, as we become our authentic selves, that takes a lot of courage. Um, yeah. And, and coming back to the unknown, I really want to share what really helped me 
because I was also scared of the unknown. But the minute I realized that, Camilla, just accept everything is unknown. Wow. Everything yeah. is unknown. I became more brave because I thought, well, no matter what, I don't know tomorrow anyway. You know, we put these seemingly sort of um, parameters in place or situations in our lives thinking that we have some sort of safety. But I think the pandemic came to show all of us. Everything yeah. is unknown. If we can know one thing is know that everything is unknown. <laughs> right. And knowing that um, the unknown, I think you in this, the book talks about, you know, uh limiting beliefs uh really the reframing process of okay so how do you go in you know to reprogram and i i love you mentioned having a disciplined mind you know it starts with okay getting still getting quiet um you know this is i don't know you can walk us through maybe like okay for me i have definitely realized getting quiet getting still like what is actually running in my mind what am i yeah. telling myself yeah, um, becoming aware of, of the thought patterns on, that are running on the subconscious plane. Believing Before Seeing, a new bestseller by Candace Barr. Order your copy today. Yeah, absolutely. Because the subconscious mind runs our lives 95% of the time. And when we realize that, and it makes me laugh because we update our phones and our computers all the time without even looking at the small prints. But you know, we think sometimes, oh no, I'm gonna leave that pattern down there in my subconscious mind from when I was six. That's working so well for me now at you know 49. <laughs> but where, like, let's look at it. And, and and when I really started to study, I'm obsessed with the brain and the mind. And when I really started to understand that whatever I place up to my brain, it will work with. So if I have a limited and whatever is my limited belief at the at the base of it is what my confirmation bias will go look for proof of wow. that blew my mind because i thought if i am every day and, and, and i had to go on a self-love journey too right wow. and that was a, a major part of my healing and still is if i went to look for proof of me not being enough every mm -hmm. single day guess what i'll find it <laughs> i'll find yeah. it right because absolutely yeah, but if I started looking for proof of being enough, I will also find that. And so, so that's why wouldn't I go looking for that? <laughs> yes. So, but let's just say we've got people who are really, and I see this, I mean, a lot, you know, uh, some people more than others, and whether it be their some people be like, I've always been this way, you know, I, I've just, I mean, as in Debbie Downer and negative thinking, like, you know, glass half, you know, not, you know, not full empty, but like that negativity bias, like how can we begin unblocking? Uh, and I know your work, you do that for people. So how do every, you single day. every single <laughs> day, every and I do it myself. Um, yeah. Okay. But it's language. It's actually okay. also our language, right? Okay. If yes. I think about it, if you, and this is, here's the thing. I always ask people, would you speak the way you speak to yourself, to your best friend? Oh my God. The yeah. answer usually is absolutely not. Are you joking? I would never say that to my best friend. I'll be like, you got this. I believe in you. You're amazing. You are such an incredible woman. What? Do you see what I mean? But then to ourselves, we're like, no, I don't think you're probably not gonna, you're not gonna do this. You're, you don't have what it takes. It's gonna take you longer. Like what? Right. We have a choice. Yes. So if we want ourselves to show up as our best versions, it, it is actually the way we speak about ourselves and to ourselves. Self-talk is important. And I talk about this in my books. Self-talk is majorly important. And, and this is something we can catch ourselves doing. There was this, I remember when I first got to LA, there was a colleague of mine and I sat in a meditation class and she suddenly said, I just wanna share this with everybody. It's really helpful when we are catching ourselves in our negative self-talk to just finish the sentence with, and I love myself anyway. Oh my God, I love myself anyway. Right, so if you say, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm late yeah. doing this, I haven't done it, and I love myself anyway, it's like a warmth and it's, it is it's compassionate and it's kind. And I did that for about three years. I would just use it all the time, but it takes, I want everybody to know, it mm. doesn't happen overnight. To train mm. our mind, because we have a negativity bias, it wants, it loves to go to the negative. We have to train the brain every day by going to the, the, the mind gym, as I call it. 
meaning meditation because in meditation as we sit there right we acknowledge wow i'm so busy thinking wow i'm thinking about this thing and then we redirect the thought to one thing that could be the breath a color an affirmation a sound whatever it is but when you're redirecting over and over and over and over again that means that you can in moments in your waking life when you're walking around doing things you can reframe you can say i notice I'm feeling doubt. You don't think I felt doubt when I wrote yeah. three books. I had no idea how to write one book. Wow. I didn't even know what I was Tell doing. That. Right? That's so powerful. That's so powerful. I saw the doubt. I went, oh, hi, doubt. There you are. Do you know yeah. what? I'm not going to do this today. I see you. But I today, I'm going to choose because I can make a choice to believe in myself. Because today, right now, as I'm writing this, believing in myself will serve me better than dancing with the doubt. Oh my God. No, I love this. And I, I think I heard this through, you were being interviewed somewhere and you talked a little bit about how, when you were in just to, for instance, you were about to do a dance and you had learned to rehearse the win or everything that it's already happening. It's in flow. I think about like, you know, being prepared for the actual, okay, it's today's happening, but I've been working and getting prepared and rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing. And then like, you can maybe share a little bit about that experience. I, I think it's so relevant it to, is. again, people were like, well, I mean, I'm still struggling with this. You maybe they're kind of having, you know, mouth vomit talking with a friend or girlfriends or in a circle, but it's not really healthy talk. It's like, no, 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 that's different. It's sitting down, spending time, getting quiet, becoming an observer, imagining the life. Okay. That you, what is the outcome that I'm wanting to create? Totally holding a vision of that. And the reason why that's powerful and, and I'm forever grateful for my, my coach at 13 teaching me this. When basically, if I imagine something in my mind, let's say I'm going to do a public talk, you know, and I'm nervous. Let's say that I imagine myself feeling the nerves, going on stage, delivering the speech. And even if I'm uncomfortable, I get through it and I feel really proud of myself. If I run this in my mind right now, my mind cannot differentiate between whether I just imagined it or I actually did it. Wow. That to me is like giving the brain direction so that when I actually stand there, I've already run it in my mind. So it's not really the first time. And I know that even though I feel nervous, even because let's accept when we do something for the first time, we're going to feel uncomfortable. Yes. But guess what? We can handle uncomfortable. Mm. We can handle it. We can accept. This is where acceptance is important. Okay, I feel that, but I also know that I'm also excited and I have something important to share here. And I've already visualized myself on the other side of this, so I can do this. My body already thinks I've done it once. That is powerful. I love that. Yeah, that, and that's part of that reframe visualization process. I, I love that. So, you know, and this is another thing you mentioned, the authenticity. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes we're looking at, at what everybody else around us is doing. Um, I've done this, you know, I, and I will say I tend to be, I don't actually, I have always kind of liked to do things in my own way, maybe as help, but I still struggle with the peer pressure or like, what is expected, you know, societal wise, but how would you, you know, maybe say, how can we more embrace our own uniqueness and flow um, for how things are, you know, to bring about our best self? It's vital because your story and what brought you to this moment is a unique set of skills that's come together and wisdom and alignment for you. And same for me and same for someone else. You will connect to people in a different way, perhaps than I will and someone else would. This is why this is vital that we all have something to share in different yeah. ways, yeah. in different careers. Okay, we got, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Camila uh, is coming to us here uh, and thank you so much for sharing and your experiences. Um, I would like to uh, tell anyone about your app, Zen Me Meditation app. I highly recommend uh, checking it out, downloading it. I'm using it, doing uh, the positive affirmations. Um, Camille, is there anything that you would want to uh, tell anyone here, our audience, how they can find you, um, learn more about your work? Yes, absolutely. Send me .tv or on the app. And just know that on the app, you have all of my courses too. They're, you know, short, 
you know, meditations for daily use that you can go on a self-love journey, abundance journey, highly sensitive for highly sensitive people and so forth is, is all on the app. And thank you so much for, for sharing. And also reframing is a tool that I mentioned in most of my books because it is a powerful tool. I'm very tool based, as you know, um, and it's in the books if you want to dive in further to the to the reframing process, which is so powerful to have. Thank you. Yeah, it's so great. And for anyone who is listening, um, I wanted to just put a shout out for um, a yoga retreat that is coming up in Joshua Tree in May. I'm also going to be hosting um, another one in October that will be both for men and women. Um, please reach out and you can find the link in the show notes. Um, and Camila, I would love it if you would lead us through a moment of uh, meditation or whatever feels you feel is going to be supportive for us today. Okay. We're going to um, finish with the I am meditation because it means that we can create a positive statement for ourselves today. But before we just close our eyes now and take a deep breath all the way down into the belly, exhale, letting go of all the stuff. You don't need to bring with you on this inward journey today. Just a few minutes here together. And first, just listening to how you're feeling in this moment. Moment. How am I feeling in this moment? What do I need? Just listening within. And allowing your breath to flow in and out of your nose. We're going to say the words, I am five times and I'd like you to add a word that's going to be your word for the day maybe it's confidence or calm or relax whatever it is just as you say I on the in breath and am on the out breath just silently in your mind with the breath finishing the sentence with whatever word is encouraging you today it could be I am enough whatever works for you I am I am. I am. Maybe just putting your hands over your heart. I am whole and complete. I have every I have everything I need within me. I am always enough, worthy, loved, and supported here. And so it is. Take a deep breath in, sealing this practice, and then go ahead and open your eyes whenever you're ready. Welcome back. Thank you. It's such an honor. Um, and if anyone is just listening in, um, Camila, I, I have just tremendous respect and just the opportunity to have you here today and for how you are making such an impact in this world and helping people with reframing, reprogramming through the power of positive affirmation, um, giving yourself a chance to start over, start new. Um, again, if anyone is looking for resources, uh, please check out uh, the Zen Me app and um, you can follow Camila on social media uh, for her events. She also teaches an unplug meditation in Los Angeles. So thank you. Thank you. And can I say, I'm so happy to see you also spreading your beautiful light. Thank you. I so appreciate you. <laughs> And thank you to this audience for everyone listening. Um, you will catch us next week on Tuesday uh, for more episodes. Um, please find us. Uh, you can find me through Instagram or like us here in the comments and follow for more episodes. <laughs>